Okay, hello everyone. Bill After for OneWrestling.com. Where are they now? My goodness, one of one of my heroes when I first broke in was this bearded guy. One of the scariest looking bearded guys they had ever met. And before Randy Savage ever came up with, oh yeah, this is the guy that invented, oh yeah, Pompero Furpo, the wild bull of the Pampas. Welcome. It is such a thrill to see you. Thank you. Where is all the hair? Well, time comes when you have to look a little bit more <laughs> acceptable in, in society, you know. Is that what it was? It, that was it was. How many, uh, what, what year did you start in the business? It was in 1950. And where was that? In Buenos Aires, Argentina, in the Luna Park. Yes, and you and were around. From there, you were around the same time as Antonino Rocca around then, correct? Correct. Red Rocca was uh, maybe ten years earlier than me. Okay. He was a great, great athlete. He was my hero when I was there. Yeah. And yeah. then, the mentor of him became my mentor to myself too when I come to the United States, and his name was. Banca Celestiak. Yes, yes. Mountain Banca Celestiak. And Roca came in 19, uh, I believe was 1950 something to United States via Texas and then went to New York. Yeah, and what and a then, run, wow. Then the same promoter was interested in me, they sent me to United States, and uh, he did, and then from there on, everything became, uh, like you know, a success, modesty and aside. Oh, you know? I, I have no, you, you don't have to be modest. I mean, the, your success was incredible. Uh, in the New York area, uh, of course, your battles with uh, uh, I Am Ready For Any Kind of Action, Pedro Morales, uh, your Midwest feuds and partnership with The Sheik, I mean, uh, and I've got to tell you something. Back in those days, somebody like you came out, and the fans were genuinely scared. Today, they laugh at some of the bad guys, but you had that look. And I remember my first interview with you, and you looked at me. I had my tape recorder, and I asked you what you were going to do to your opponent in Detroit. I think it was Tex McKenzie. And you said, kill, murder, destroy. Remember that? Yes, I remember. Can you still do that, by the way? We, we, what do you, what, what, what you want me to do now? Oh, do yeah. oh, yeah. Wow. Give me some kill, murder, destroy. Destroy. Kill, murder. Pulverize. Murder. Now, I, I, I remember asking you on one of those interviews, uh, you said, kill, murder, pulverize. I said, what happened to destroy? You said, well, my opponents got afraid and they start to call the promoters saying they have flat tires. So <laughs> I remember that. That, that was great. What, what um, uh, in the great opponents that you had, what, what are like some of the great opponents that uh, you remember? Angelo Saboldi. Angelo Saboldi, yes. Still alive a, in his nineties. Yeah. Still alive. He was a great champion. Yes. In 1959, I disputed the championship with him in Oklahoma, and then was a very much controversial decision. And they brought one of the greatest wrestlers ever came to the professional, and he said he will be the judge on that match. And that was, uh, let me see, the name of the gentleman was uh, very famous from Oklahoma. And... Uh, uh, Leroy McGurk? For Leroy McGurk, yes. Yes, yes, yeah, I remember, I remember. Yeah. What and about... that man... Go ahead. Go ahead. What, what about your... He uh, was the judge in my... Now, you, you also... Now, what, what I'd like to do right now, I'm going to get up yeah. for a moment... And I'm going to play you two or three minutes worth of an audio tape that I did with you many, many, many years ago with you and the Grand Wizard. And I just want to watch your face when I play this for you. Okay? So hold on a minute. <laughs> 
Hold on a minute. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. All right. Okay. Let's see if we can. Uh, let's see if we can do this. All right. Hang on a minute. Okay, this is Bill Apter. Right now, we're uh, I'm standing next to what are you, what are you Bill Apter. I interviewed you in Detroit. Do you remember? Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, check my credentials. Yeah, yeah well, I remember. Let me ask you uh, something, Pompero. Uh, you're reading one of our magazines there. I noticed you've been uh, you've been managed by uh, the Grand Wizard in this part of the territory, and yet uh, you've wrestled Abdullah. You you just when you mention the Grand Wizard, you have to say the brain. The brain. Oh, yes. Is sir. he as smart as you are? Well, listen, I think you'll try to be as smart as both of us. I'm not trying to be that. smart. I'm just asking. Are uh, you trying why? to aggravate me? No, I'm not trying to aggravate you. I just want to know if uh, if you think your manager is I just think as only as one thing. What's that? Keep talking. Hmm. Can you hear now, it okay? Uh, you have wrestled the Sheik in Toronto and uh, I believe in Detroit. And uh, I wanted to give you some of our, uh, our old recording there. But... Um, uh, tell everybody right now where you're living these days and what are you doing? Right now, I live here in California and I'm enjoying very much my, I can say, uh, uh, my relaxation with my grandchildren and my, my children too. So I'm very grateful to accomplish as a father, as a grandfather, and as a husband, what any man, any man in life wish to be done, you know what I mean? And that was your beautiful daughter, uh, Mary. Um, Mary. What? Mary, Julie, and John. What did, uh, if you could say the best thing about what the wrestling business did to enrich your life, what would you say? What was well, the best part? I'm very, grateful. I'm very grateful to my profession because it gave me the chance to travel and come to the country which for me was my dream since I was a little boy. We start from this way. My father was a great fighter and he supposedly had to be going to Germany for the Olympics in 1936. But his name was Kachmanian and they thought that he was from Argentina, but he was from Armenia. So he cannot represent the country. So get into me, the bar, when he say, okay, if I cannot go to the Olympics, I want to be a promoter, I will build my own stadium. So he did that. And from the age of seven years old in 1937, he put me to be timing the fighters tell him the 10 seconds to go or, or whatever, black shot or whatever. And uh, from there on, the bug get in me and me. And uh, my father left a big name in the boxing in amateur. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 79 yeah. fight and 79 wins, you see? Wow. Wow. He was the kind of man that uh, with him was one way only, his way. <laughs> And I, I get respect on that because he said to me, if you want to be somebody in life, stay away from cigarettes, for drinks, and for the easy life. You have, to, you have to earn a position in a sport, being you very disciplined in your uh, activities. So maybe half for the reputation of my father and half for Vanka Zelesniak, Celestia said, your place is to start travel away from Argentina. So I say, well, what do you suggest? He said, well, why don't you start from the bottom, go to the two neighbors, Chile and Uruguay. So I accept to go to Chile. Then from Chile, I meet friendship with Arturo Godoy, a former contender to the World Championship. Yeah, Cup. I remember the name. Yes, Arturo Godoy, he was a good, good man. And he said to me, you got a good future because you have what nature gave you plus. So I said, thank you very much. And from there on, from Chile, I went to Peru and Peru, then Venezuela, Venezuela. I went to Mexico and Mexico is the place will give me the final uh, step to jump to the United States. The promoter told me, he said, I dislike to lose you, but your place is 
America. So I came mm. to the United States in 1957. All over the world, all over the uh, world yeah. on, on, on your profession. I was yeah. in five different continents, yeah. 21 foreign countries, and I have 6,881 matches. Wow, gee. And I will say, without bragging about it, maybe you have only 10% of them lost. The How? rest was all in a way that was a big part. How, how young are you these days? At the time, I was uh, 50, uh, 30 years old. How old are you now? Well, I'm 80, I will be 82 in April. Wow, bless you, bless you. Well, well, you yes, there... I feel very well. Yeah, you look I right. follow my father's advice. I never smoke. I never smoke, I never drink. And always training. And I accomplish what I was looking for. What would you like to say to all... What would you like to say to all the people? Because okay. we're just about out of time. What would you like to say to all the people that loved you and hated your character as well that are watching here all around the world? I would say that I'm very grateful in one way or another that I succeed in my intention. And I'm very grateful to the crowd who, like or dislike, still was demanding my action. And to me, that was a big accomplishment. That is why I will say I face a lot of good contenders, good champions. One of them, Danny Hodge, which is a great, great, great champion. Yes. And Lutez was another one. And uh, Tony Bourne was another one. Yeah. So Angelo Savoldi was a master of the trade. Before, so, we, before we go, I'm going, to ask yes. you, I'm going to ask you a favor, okay? Yes. Let's go back 40 years, okay? You're now Pompero okay. Furpo. Ten tonight, you are challenging Pedro Morales for the World Heavyweight Championship. I'm yes. the announcer. Look into the camera. Pompero Furpo, tell us, are you going to beat Pedro Morales tonight? Oh, yeah. I yeah. will do that. All right. That's what, I, that's, that's what we wanted to hear. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We love you, and thank you for uh, being here on OneWrestling.com with us. And uh, it's great to see that you're around. And I'm, I will be in the San, Fr San Jose, Newark area with Big Time WrestleFest when they run their WrestleFest this year. And I will make sure that I come by and see you. Okay. I will be, I will be the 15, 16, and 17. I will be in Las Vegas, I believe. Oh, enjoy. Uh, Nick Bogwinkle. Cauliflower yeah, Alley. Yes, yes. Yes, correct. Yes. correct. They asked me to go over there, so I might go. I don't know yet because the 16 and 15 are the birthday of my two grandchildren, and I'm collapsing with that, you see? Well, that's great. That's great. Again, the Pompero, baby. We're, we're just about out of time. I'm sorry. Oh. And uh, I just okay. want to tell you that, again, per, on my personal end, I love you. Thank you so much for helping me out back in the days when I was – in my formative days and opening so many doors and anytime I needed you to pose for pictures or do an interview, you were right there with me. Thank you. Oh yeah. You were an asset and you're Oh 